Hi, friends. I'm Emily Lay, and you're listening to The Simplified Podcast. If you're looking to simplify your life and organize your home, then you're in the right place. Every week, I invite you to explore practical ways to organize and automate the complicated parts of life so you can focus on what truly matters most. At Simplified, this is one of our favorite times of year because we're starting up one of our favorite rituals again, the New Year Simplicity Challenge. Every day for the next few weeks, Team Simplified is leading you in a small task that'll make a big impact in your home, whether it's tossing out the junk in your purse that makes it hard to find anything, or making a list of go-to meals so that weekly meal planning is a breeze. Just follow us on Instagram at Simplified so you can get started with the New Year's Simplicity Challenge and make your 2023 just a little bit easier. Happy New Year, friends. Are you enjoying your fresh start? I know I am. If you joined us last week for our week-long New Year's bonus series, you know that I love this time of year. I spend a lot of time thinking about where I've been and where I want to go, not just personally, but in my family and also professionally. I know you're thinking a lot about this too, so if you haven't listened to those episodes yet, I bet you're going to love them. Last week, during that sleepy time between Christmas and New Year's, I always take some quiet time to get ready for the year ahead. And last week, I focused on getting my mind right and clearing the mental clutter. And now I really want our house to feel fresh and clean so that we can settle back into our normal routines without all the clutter of the last few months to hold on to us. And do you know what helps me breathe a little easier when it's clean and organized? My fridge. I don't know about you, but in the months leading up to the holidays, my refrigerator slowly grows from normal fridge to jam-packed, can't-fit-another-block-of-cheese-in kind of crammed. During the holidays, we're cooking with ingredients we don't normally use and keep a lot more on hand for drop-in guests, lots of meat and cheese and veggies and condiments that are so great when we're entertaining folks at all times during the holidays, but we don't exactly need an extra jar of cranberry sauce or five different types of jams for charcuterie boards in January because we are generally not doing that kind of stuff in January. So naturally, this stuff tends to pile up. And rather than getting fed up with the clutter and snapping one day, I thought it might be helpful for us to think about cleaning out our fridges, especially since they are one of the most high-traffic places in our homes. And today, I have a very special guest for you guys to hear from. She is actually my producer here for this podcast. Her name is Amy Kerr. So I have known Amy for years and years now. She's the producer of the Simplified Podcast. What does that mean exactly? She helps us think about what we want to talk to you about every week. She helps us capture the audio and gets the show up on the podcast feeds every week. Basically, she's the midwife of the podcast. She brings it into the world. Well, we decided we were going to completely flip this episode on its head, and Amy is going to interview me about what I do with my fridge. So I, as you will hear in this episode, have not been prepped for any of these questions, and Amy just went right on in and asked me all about our refrigerator and freezer, what our clean-out routines are like, what kind of recipes we throw together with what we have on hand, and what some of the biggest fridge mistakes we've ever made are. And you know what I'm talking about, those special science experiments that you sometimes find in there. I cannot wait for you guys to hear from Amy. She's going to be a guest on the podcast a couple more times in the upcoming year. You are absolutely going to love her. She's one of my favorite humans, and I just know that you guys are going to love her. So without further ado, let's get started with my conversation on how to simplify your fridge with my producer, Amy. Amy. Hi, everybody. This is producer Amy. And hello, Emily Lay. Hello. Welcome to your own podcast. How are you doing today? Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. <laughs> <laughs> this is fun. So I think we all kind of wanted to start at the top of the year with one of the biggest pain points in our houses, which is our fridges. And honestly, they're kind of like a cluster at the beginning of the year. Mm-hmm. So tell me, about your fridge system. We've all seen it like on your beautiful Instagram. It always looks fantastic, but I want to know, A, like what does it look like in real life? Like where do you put all the things and how do you store all the things, A? And B, do you have like any organizational tools like inside your fridge that make your life a little bit easier? Okay, I love this. And I have I have many answers. Number one, any photo you've ever seen of my fridge was staged. <laughs> <laughs> it was clean. It was arranged. It was probably color-coded. Right now, what does my fridge look like right now? This is like MTV Cribs. Like, come look in I know, my right? fridge. Yeah, it's a mess. So 
do I have a system? My fridge is like, it's a built-in, so it like looks like a cabinet on the front, mm. and it's kind of shallow because it has to be cabinet depth, and it's wide, if that makes any sense. And the fridge is on the bottom. So I have like a couple of clear containers. Well, a couple months ago, I had like a couple of clear containers. I had one that holds butter, I have one that holds eggs, and it's a fancy egg holder. Like it has a little bitty like bowl shape for each egg, which I like. Mm -hmm. I enjoy that. But I enjoyed those two things so much. And I admired my sister-in-law, Taylor, who works with me. I admired her fridge and my mom's fridge so much that I thought I'm going to go to the containerstore.com and I'm going to order all the clear containers because doesn't it just make you feel like your life's going to be together in general when you have clear containers with things in it in your pantry and your fridge? It doesn't work. <laughs> Spoiler, it doesn't work. <laughs> but it feels good. The, the potential of it all feels yes. so amazing. It, it might work if you're my mom or Taylor. Like, it works for them. But it just, <laughs> there's too many little hands in my fridge. Like, it just doesn't work. So, yeah. so I bought all these things. I ended up returning most of these things because, A of all, you put them in there and they frost over so you can't see what's in them. Wow. There's frost on it and you can't see, but I, I, it just was like too organized. I don't know. Like I, I would buy something random and then it wouldn't fit. It's the same thing with your pantry. Like you, you buy a box of crackers and there's no place for the box of crackers because there's no bin for it. So then where do you put it? <laughs> it's stuff for your stuff. You know it's what I mean? It's stuff for your stuff. And if you're crazy like me, you're like, oh, like, well, I just shouldn't own this because there's nowhere, no clear container for it to go. So anyways, just way too much. So what I ended up doing is keeping a couple of clear containers for like my kids love Chobani yogurt. So we have a ton of that in our fridge. So I bought these clear containers to keep them all lined up and keep them from falling over. And that's it. We have a drawer for cheese. We have a drawer for meat. We have a drawer for fruits and veggies. And then we have a drawer for whatever their random things need to go in a drawer. That is it. But I will say, my mom did tell me about these Rubbermaid, they're called Clear Brilliance containers. They're plastic. They're not glass. I know people have theories on glass and plastic. I'm with you. I had the glass ones, but they're very heavy. And I like the mm -hmm. plastic ones because they stack up and they store really nicely. And they're also like safe for the microwave and the dishwasher and all that stuff. It's like minimal organizational tools, if you will. Well, I mean, I think that you make a good point. There's so many times I think that we... We're trying really hard and we think that like buying an organizational system is going to be like the end all be all and it's going to solve yeah. all of our problems. But like there is such a thing as organizing your stuff too much. You oh, know? yeah. It's like the time I tried to color code my kids Legos. Like that was why. <laughs> <laughs> I bet it looked really pretty for like the first five minutes before they started to play with it. But I mean, like, do yeah. you want it clean or, you know, no. it's just like. Pick your priority. You know? Pick your priority. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we have that in the fridge, and then in the freezer we have a we have a couple of those same clear. They're kind of like tall, narrow, clear containers yeah. that I use in the fridge and in the in the freezer. And for that, I will put like uncrustables, and we'll make bagels and freeze those, and we'll make Hawaiian roll sandwiches and freeze those for lunches. And they just line up nice and neat in those little containers. Oh, I love it. Don't you just like love symmetry? Like where just, you can get it, you know? Yeah. It just makes me happy. Like what this is gonna sound ridiculous, but like the yogurt situation, we have we keep fifteen yogurts in my fridge at all times because there's three containers and each hold five. And so when I go to the grocery nice. store, I know how many I need to buy to get to fifteen. <laughs> That's not dumb. That is fantastic. <laughs> that leads really well into my next question. So like when something's getting low, like in your yeah. fridge. I think we kind of know, you just kind of answered it. Like, how do you know when to restock it besides like yogurt? And like, what's yeah. your method to remember? Like, oh, I see the thing. It's getting low. This is how I remember to restock it. So I, I am like the best shipped customer there ever was. We get like our weekly order of groceries from Shipped and I will just go into the app and add stuff as I think of it. If I like don't have my phone on me or something, we have a little dry erase board that I'll add it to kind of like right in front of our fridge. I'm nodding like oh, you nice. guys can see. It's like gray hair in the kitchen, but I'll add it to there. But usually like usually once or twice a week on top of our weekly grocery order, I'm swinging by like the tiny grocery store by our house and just grabbing something that we need. So mm -hmm. That's mainly how I stay on top of it. But I also have like a, a weekly perpetual grocery list of things that I know we need all the time because, you know, we always go through milk and bread and that kind of stuff. And then on top of that, when it comes to like dinners and stuff, I learned this from the lazy genius that you should decide once, which 
I believe when this airs, will have just aired this episode mm-hmm. with Kendra. Okay, so yep. go back and listen to that episode. It was amazing with Kendra Adachi from The Lazy Genius. But we we talked about deciding once for dinner. And so like, I know I always need to have tortellini and meatballs in my mm-hmm. refrigerator because we're going to eat it once a week. And my kids love it. It's a slam dunk. So that kind of stuff helps me stay on top of it also. Yeah. No, that's so good. Like, I feel like there's so much redundancy here but like yeah. it's almost like checks and balances to make sure like you don't forget any of the things and so yeah. let me be a producer here for a second and go and point out and be like we did an episode on perpetual grocery list that is so completely helpful so if you guys are like wondering what emily's talking about with perpetual grocery list like what goes on there how do i do this like go back in the archive it is there for you it's a good one yeah it is a really good one If you want to fuel your body with delicious food in the new year, but you don't have a lot of time to research recipes, then go to the grocery store, then stand in the kitchen and make meals from scratch, don't sweat it. Green Chef's here to do the hard work for you. Listen, you guys, no matter which kind of food fits your lifestyle, whether it's keto or vegan, gluten-free or Mediterranean, Green Chef has a meal kit for you. They save me so much prep time in the kitchen with their pre-measured sauces and spices and dressings. Plus, I never get bored with eating the same thing because Green Chef has a huge menu. You can choose from 30 recipes each week. I usually eat pretty keto since carbs kind of make me feel blah, and Green Chef is the only keto meal kit. They make it so easy to eat well without spending a ton of time in the kitchen. You've got to check out their Mediterranean chicken bowl with roasted Brussels sprouts and feta. I mean, come on. You had me at feta. Guys, if you want to fuel up your body and save some time in the kitchen, Green Chef is a no-brainer. Go to greenchef.com slash simplified60 and use code simplified60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. This is a super good deal, you guys, so don't miss out. One more time, go to greenchef.com slash simplified60 and use code simplified60 to get 60% off plus free shipping. Green Chef, the number one meal kit for eating well. From curling and straightening to hairspray to over bleaching, we've all done some damage to our hair. I can't tell you how hard I've tried to get my hair to hold some curl, and it never does. But over the years, I've kind of made my hair a bit thin and brittle. So if you're like me and struggle to have longer and thicker hair after years of damage, you have to give Vegamore a try. Vegamore has something for everyone looking to improve their hair health, but I highly recommend their Grow Revitalizing Shampoo and Conditioner Kit. Just massage the shampoo into your scalp for 60 seconds and then follow up with conditioner. And in no time, you'll see that your hair is thicker and fuller all the way from the roots. That's what I've seen with my hair. Even though I still curl and straighten it every day, it hasn't felt this thick and full in years. So don't let damage of the past hold your hair back. See your hair's full potential with Vegamore. Go to vegamore.com slash simplified and use code simplified to save 20% on your first order. That's vegamore, V-E-G-A-M-O-U-R dot com slash simplified, code simplified to save 20%. Vegamore.com slash simplified. Tell me a little bit more about like clean out the fridge meals. You know what you need to have in your fridge at all times to make a meal, but there are times that we're just going to get too much stuff. You have the spring mix that's about to go bad and you don't want it to go bad and inevitably will, but like you're going to try really hard to make it not. (laughs) Like you've got some veggies there, you know, or those celery's getting a little, mm, I don't know. What are your favorite clean out the fridge meals? I feel like Nana's really good at this. Yeah, she's going to come into play here. So there's two answers. There's a level one answer here, and there's a level two. Level one is where we usually go, and that's the charcuterie board. It's a clean out the fridge board, and it's like (laughs) you get out the olives, all the crackers, all the cheeses, what like whatever. It can be it can be carrots. It can be whatever you want. Leftovers after Christmas, we always do this because we always have you know random people over for random things, and then the day after Mm -hmm. Christmas, you're like, why do I have all these random leftovers that have nothing to do with each other? in my oh fridge my and what can we do? You just have a leftover meal and you pull it all out, heat it all up. So that is my go-to for a clean out the fridge meal. My mom makes a soup that is one of my favorite things and she will just take whatever leftover like vegetables or spinach or whatever she has and she will make a vegetable soup. I think she buys the cabbage to like serve as the base for the soup mm-hmm. or she just has it on hand, but she makes this soup that's cut up all the veggies, some vegetable stock and some crushed tomatoes. And 
she just spices it up and it is so good especially if you put some like hot sauce on it and put a little parmesan cheese delicious delicious mm. meal. yes mm -hmm. okay my mom does a similar thing it was always like growing up it was like her vegetable soup yeah. and she would make it in like this huge pot because inevitably like there was like the dream that we would eat vegetables someday and right. dear listener we ate zero vegetables <laughs> and so <laughs> she would she would always make oh, but in the soup like magically they were delicious and the cabbage I don't know it's like in your mom's soup it does this but like mom would put cabbage in this vegetable soup and we'd be like oh, you think we're gonna eat that but like it would melt <laughs> away and it would just yeah. like make like this beautiful delicious broth does it do that in your yeah. mom's no it totally oh does gosh. it totally does and the spiciness is what I like about it so she <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. I'll call my mom because I can make it but it's not the same as when my mom makes it so I will mm -hmm. I will sometimes call my mom and be like will you Will you clean out your fridge and make me that soup? <laughs> and she does. <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh, it's just that. a really good, like, uh, detox soup, too, because it's straight veggies, mm -hmm. and it's just really delicious. Yeah. I bet it freezes really well, too. So it does. She actually, when she brings it to me, she puts it in Ziploc bags, and I'll freeze <gasps> them flat. Yeah. Love Nana. Love Nana. She's a smart one. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a very important question. Do you have a system for labeling leftovers? And if you do... What is it? No. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was a letdown. <laughs> I keep masking tape and a Sharpie yeah. by my yeah. fridge. And so that's it's it's like right there. I can always see it. So I'm just like, you know what? It's right, right next to the stove too. So I'm usually making a pot of something. I always eat yeah. for lunch. So I'm like, you know what? Write the thing. Write the day you packed it. Boom. Do you really? You always eat soup for lunch? That's fascinating. That's my decide once. In the winter, it's soup. In the summer, it's salad. So I'm just like, I don't have to think about it, you know? Yeah. You just call it a day. So the masking tape thing I do in my pantry, I will put the Smart. masking tape on the bottom of like the flour or the sugar or whatever to say like when it goes bad. Because if you've ever opened a box of pancake mix and found bugs <gasps> in it, Oh my gosh. I thought it was just me. I've done that <laughs> no. with rice before and I'm just like, oh my no. God. No, it, I was making pancakes one day and I pulled, and it wasn't even that far expired from like what it said. And it's sure enough, there were a little bugs in it. So <laughs> always, no. always pay attention to that. Okay. So my friend Dusty, who also works with us, she is the queen of never wasting a single morsel of food. Like <gasps> she me. has like three mushrooms left over from a recipe. She is putting that stuff in the fridge and writing it down and saving it. And she mm -hmm. will work. She, if you have to follow her on Instagram, it's Pieces of the Piets is her new name. She just changed it or Piece of the Piets. Anyway, you have to go find her. But she is so good at like really utilizing every single bit of food. And I admire her a lot for that. I cannot wait to go yeah. follow her because I, I feel like I am always like, whether it's a stir fry, whether it's yeah. random soup, like I made like a random, like it ended up being a jambalaya because I was just yeah. like, I have this sausage, I have these vegetables. And also this is very brothy. So I just like dump some rice in. But right. like, honestly, if you just let anything sit on the stove long enough, it will turn it out into something good. good. Yeah. So do you know what's really fun is when you clean out your fridge, said no one ever. So <laughs> how often... How often do you like muster the courage to like actually like clean out your fridge? And I'm talking yeah. like not just like mm, I'm gonna rearrange some stuff. Like actually like yeah. pull things out, get the shelves out, wash your fridge. Like confession time. How often do you actually do that? Because I will say oh, maybe once a year. Like I'm really bad at it. But here's a little little known secret about me. I'm sure no one will assume this but like this is what i do for fun so like it's a random <laughs> saturday we have nothing Listen, to do on a some saturday people cook, some i know people clean their fridges on saturdays you this know. is exactly it like some people love to get in the kitchen and bake stuff i'm like can i come over and clean out your pantry like i would love to do that so i clean out my pantry and my fridge maybe like every other month because i'm crazy Whoa. because i'm crazy <laughs> Because I, I enjoy no. the feeling of opening my fridge and being like, ah. <laughs> oh, that's nice, though. Okay, so when you do that, do you have, yeah. like, a method that you yeah. use to pull everything out and, like, to wash stuff? Do you have, like, cleaners? Yeah. Like, I need to know all the things so that I can just, like, I don't know, put a podcast on and just, like, yeah. do it. Because so, I hate it. Yes, this is how I feel about cooking a meal. So Amy Migdalia <laughs> is going to kill me if she hears me saying this. She was the amazing nutritionist I worked with last year. Yeah, last year. But I tried like a lot of the clean type cleaners, 
but like mm-hmm. nothing works as good as Lysol, that kind of stuff. So I just kind of go in there. And also, listen, I had yeah. salmonella as a kid for 11 months and it was so bad. <gasps> I mean, it was a baby. So what? I don't it, but yeah, I had salmonella and was like in the hospital. And so like, like Whoa. chicken, like cooking. Ch- I think this might be my aversion to like cooking things. Cooking chicken, I will burn that stuff. Like it has to be done, right? Yeah. My favorite kitchen tool is a meat thermometer because I'm like 165 degrees all the time. So when I clean out the refrigerator, I like to get in there and I take everything out. I mean, it's the same thing if you're cleaning out like a closet. You take everything out, Mm -hmm. you wipe it all down. I will, I'll wipe it all down first. And then I take, we have a little shark like stick vacuum and I'll go vacuum all the crumbs out of the drawers. If the drawers need it, which is sometimes they do, I'll take them out and wash them in the sink, like with just warm soapy water. And then I just start to put it all back in. And always check your condiments expiration dates because you never know how long something's been in there. And you'll be like, 2021? Oh, my gosh. (laughs) That's conservative. (laughs) What did I find the other day in my pantry? Something from like 2018. And I was horrified. (laughs) I was like, how in the pandemic did this happen? Like, I had so much time. How in the pandemic? I can't even. Well, shout out to the stick vacuum for like, you can use those things everywhere. Right. In your like, car. Even yeah. in places that you don't think about. In your car, in your freaking fridge, on right. your even like the bathroom dust that like yes. is horrible and like you wipe the counters and like it just like stays there. You can use right. your vacuum on that and it's or great. if you shed you know? hair shed. like I do, like we keep a vacuum in my bathroom for my hair. <laughs> Listen, like, that's the best thing ever. I used to hate vacuuming because I lived in a house growing up that had four girls in it. Oh, gosh. It was horrible. But (laughs) now I feel like they have updated vacuums. And now that you can pop out the roller bar. Yeah. Game changer. I used to hate vacuuming. I freaking love it now. Yeah. I love it. Same. Yep. Now, this is is a fun question. Has there ever, have you ever had, like, a fridge disaster like there is something Ooh. like a science experiment that has happened in your fridge that oh i don't know yeah i'm always f- afraid of like putting something hot in there and the shelves just like cracking and disintegrating and dying i've tested this theory a few times because my mom always says yeah. like don't don't take a pyrex well this is the opposite but like don't take a pyrex out of the fridge and put it straight in the oven but i've yeah. done it <laughs> has it has it exploded <laughs> i have had science experiments grow in the fridge (laughs) and like unknowingly you go in to get out something and you take it out and you're like Mm -hmm. oh that's disgusting yeah that's who we are Uh that's what we're doing and they happen in the pantry also like hawaiian rolls they don't keep so you can't keep them in there a long time yeah yeah it's true my dad when we were growing up went through a phase of like making like putting sourdough in everything like he Mm. he kept a sourdough starter for like a trillion years and he is like kind of a scientist by nature anyway kind of like your dad yeah and He, at one point, I don't know what happened to the starter. I think he fed it too much. But, like, one day, it exploded. And it was in a glass container. Oh, (gasps) yeah. And, like, it was, like, glass and sourdough all over the fridge. So I'm just like, you know what? I'm still, like, shell-shocked from sourdough. And I don't know. That's my salmonella. That's my salmonella horror. It's not nearly as bad. But I'm just like, I don't know. You never know what your sourdough starter is going to do. So Brian's really into bread making right now. He bought this. Is he really? Oh my gosh. It's so random and like recent. (laughs) So two friends of ours during the pandemic, two guys, they got really into bread making and would like deliver bread to our doorstep during the pandemic. So Brian got, it's called a Zoji Rushi. It's a bread machine. You just get it on Amazon and it's, it does everything for you. So you just put the stuff in there and it like needs it and all of that. And he wants to make sourdough. And I was looking up for him the other day. And I'm like, okay, wait, there's a lot more to this than just making a loaf of bread. So I'm going to have to warn him about the sourdough starter explosion. (laughs) The only funny thing I can think of that has to do with our fridge was when Caroline, one day, Brian and I, we decided we were going to sleep in. So we told the kids, we're like, just go make yourself some breakfast. Just go get some cereal or whatever. (laughs) They're like, can we make chocolate milk? And we were like, yeah, sure, it's fine. So so Caroline decides to bring us breakfast in bed which was so sweet. She made us bagels and brought bananas and she made us chocolate milk too. So she brings it to me and I, I don't usually drink chocolate milk, but I was like, well, yeah, Yeah. I need to have a little bit because she made it. She used half and half. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) I bet that 
was real uh, rich. <laughs> it, makes, it makes me like sweat and want to gag just thinking about it. I took the biggest sip and I was like, whoa. <laughs> Listen, I had a friend in college who used to like drink, and I kid you not, she would make brownies, which was great. But then she would like take a shot of half and half. Like it was, I don't know why, cool. I had, why a shot of half and half. I was like, whoa, girl, that's like a different level of liking the dairy. That is next level. <laughs> that just sounds like a stomach ache. <laughs> Seriously, we are old now. I can't, I can't handle that. If your New Year's goals are to manage your budget better and save money, then guys, I think you need to try Rocket Money. Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill, is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, and the average person saves up to $720 a year. Listen, here's a stat that blew my mind. More than 80% of us have subscriptions we have forgotten about. And now I have to confess that I am one of those 80%. Do you know how many streaming services I signed up for during the holidays? I needed to get my holiday movie fix, you guys, and I had completely forgotten about a couple of them, but Rocket Money did not forget. They pointed out those subscriptions to me before I was charged again so I could cancel them with just one click. So stop throwing your money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash simplified. That's rocketmoney.com slash simplified. Rocketmoney.com slash simplified. Guys, I've struggled with sensitive skin my whole life. Whenever I try a new foundation or sunscreen, I'm just waiting for the moment my skin breaks out in an itchy red rash that takes way too long to heal. So if you're like me and struggle with skin that's prone to breakouts, whether it's because of eczema or acne or even rosacea, you need to give Glad Skin a try. Here is a nerdy science tip. When your skin's microbiome isn't balanced, your skin gets itchy, red, and inflamed. Glad Skin targets the imbalance in your skin's microbiome using a revolutionary protein called microbalance, which restores the balance of the good and bad bacteria that live on your skin so it can finally heal. Glad Skin with microbalance is steroid free and it's even gentle enough for babies. It's clinically proven to reduce eczema symptoms. In fact, 91% of users who tried Glad Skin's eczema cream saw a significant improvement after just seven days. So try it for yourself. Glad Skin is offering my listeners 15% off plus free shipping on your first order at Glad gladskin.com slash simplified. That's gladskin.com slash simplified for 15% off plus free shipping. Gladskin.com slash simplified. I can't believe we have so many things to say about fridges, but I know, right? So (laughs) I have one more question, but it's actually about your freezer. What do you always have in your freezer? What is your favorite freezer meal? Okay. I've a couple of answers. I try to keep a chuck roast in their freezer because you can make a pot roast with that really easily. I also keep Southern Baked Pie. It's a company out of Atlanta. And every now and then they'll have these sales on their pies. Their chicken pot pie is amazing. You can cook it from frozen. It takes an hour and it's just easy. You know, we have kids going in all different directions with sports and stuff. That and mm-hmm. Rao's R-A-O, you know that <gasps> brand, Rouse yes. Lasagna. Oh, love. Their lasagna oh. is so good. It is not Nana's lasagna, but it is good. So I keep those mm-hmm. in there. I also keep Kashi waffles because Tyler loves them. Our Hawaiian roll sandwiches <laughs> for lunch boxes. And then we've mm-hmm. my kids have recently been on this like bur- breakfast burrito kick. So we'll make like we'll either make them or we'll buy them. You can get like the I forget the brand. There's a couple different brands you can get at the grocery store, but these breakfast burritos that you take out and you wrap them in a paper towel and cook them for two minutes in the microwave and they're great. So the other thing that we keep that I just thought of, because we used to go round and round with our kids about dessert at night. Like they always want dessert. Mm-hmm. And I'm always like, okay, can we find something that's not like loaded with sugar? So yeah. we do Yasso bars and they're Greek yogurt popsicles. Oh. And they're so good, Yum. and there's tons of different kinds. And if you price shop on the Yasso bars, Target has really, Target has a really good price on Yasso bars. I don't know why. At least here, it's a lot cheaper than mm-hmm. the grocery store. And or if you watch Publix, they have Bogos a lot on Yasso bars, and we will like stock the freezer with the Yasso bars. A Publix Bogo is like I live for them. It's a win. It's such a win. Oh. It's yeah. the best. Like, if I can get, like, a BOGO Duke's mayonnaise, I feel like I've just won oh, the lottery. For like, sure. You just mm-hmm. saved so much money. Okay. Now I'm going to ask you rapid fires. Okay. I love how the tables have turned. I want to know, Emily Lay, 
how old your oldest condiment is in your fridge. Oh, it's not. It's not old. I just did it. I'm so <laughs> proud to say. I just went through. But I will say, <laughs> I will say, as of a couple months ago, it was 2021, which is a year. Well, I think we all know my shame. But like, I also am crazy. And I look at that a lot. I look at that. That's, that's not well. that's not crazy. That's just like you being a really highly functional human being when it comes to your <laughs> fridge. Instead of being like me and I'll be like, I'll buy this random Chipotle paste for oh, right. this recipe and then I'll never use it again. And then I'll make it and I'll be like, this was like last month, right? No, no, wrong. It was like two years ago. Did you know that you can get tomato paste in a squeeze tube instead of the can? Yes. And it's like changed my life. Right. Because the can, you don't use it all. But the squeeze tube... It's reusable. It's great. Do you have magnets on your fridge? And if you do, what's your favorite fridge magnet? I don't. So our fridge has like the cabinet front. So it doesn't have the, it does like not magnetized, but on the other side, so you can't see this, but like our fridge and on the other side is a wall, like behind your back if you're facing the fridge. Mm -hmm. And we have a board that has magnets all over it. And I have like little magnets of my kids when they played soccer when they were three and they used to just like pick flowers in the field. And those are my favorites. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what do you always, always, always besides yogurt have stocked in your fridge? Cheese. I can't yes. imagine a world without What's your cheese. favorite? All kinds. Amen. So I like string cheese, like as a snack, I will eat string cheese and a chomstick all the time as a snack. And oh, listen, that'll fill yeah. you up. I know, right? It's like it's like a mini mm -hmm. charcuterie board, right? We always keep cold brew. My kids drink coffee, which don't come at me. But <laughs> there's worse things. There's worse things for you. That is they, true, actually. They love making like a little cold brew. So we keep this. It's called Stoke, I think, is the brand. Anyway, mm -hmm. we keep that. Mm -hmm. We always have Chobani. We also keep Chobani flips. They love those. And mm -hmm. grapes. We have like three bags of grapes in our refrigerator right now. Okay, well, I think you might have answered this question already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. What's the most popular beverage that you have in your fridge right now? Oh, good question. The most popular beverage, the cold brew is a, is a popular one. If I have orange juice, it's always Natalie's orange juice, which is so expensive. Oh, God. It's so expensive, but it's so good. I will second mortgage my home for it. Like I mean, I kid you not, it was $14 at Publix the other day. 14 for a gallon <laughs> for a gallon but like <laughs> brian he loves orange juice and he's like please i know it's 14 please buy the natalie's orange juice and bring it home so i did but i'm like i'm like kids no you know you get an an inch and you drink all of it you know so the oh. orange juice is in high demand we also are big fans of fresca here yeah i love good. that i love a I fresca i had a fresca in a brilliant years. A brilliant. That's fantastic. Okay, ma'am. Well, you've been a delightful guest on your podcast. Thank you. So <laughs> this was fun. This was fun. We'll do it more often. I love it. Yeah, for sure. I, I never get the tables turned. It was cool. All right. Thank you. Bye. Well, that was a fun first conversation of 2023 to kick off the new year with. I love Amy. I love her so much. She is so fun to talk to. And I feel like we could just talk for hours about absolutely anything. I know that I am going to go now and clean out my fridge and just make sure that it is ready for the new year. It's stocked with all the things I need to have on hand for school to get back in session and for us to kind of start steering our eating habits toward a little bit more healthy direction. And so best wishes to you guys as you do the same. As we close out this first episode of 2023, I want to say a blessing for you as we leave this time together and get back to our days. As you start this brand new year, I hope you make room only for the things that matter. I hope you're able to organize and strategize your way to getting things done. But more importantly, I hope you make time for the good stuff. I hope that laughter and joy, rest and connection come to you in abundance because that's what we need in our days more than any checked off to-do list. As always, I like to leave a little tip to help you put what we talked about today into practice. So here is your task for this week. If you need an easy way to remember to use up your leftovers, I think Amy's Sharpie and masking tape solution might work really well for you. So here's what to do. Find a Sharpie you're not using, get a roll of masking tape and keep it in a drawer by the fridge. That way, when you're putting away leftovers, it's so easy to just tear off a small piece, write a label that says what the item is and the date you packed it. 
That way, when you're rummaging around the fridge, you'll know exactly what you're looking at and know when it's time to toss anything you haven't used. Thank you guys for listening to The Simplified Podcast. I hope you're feeling supercharged to clean and restock and organize your fridge just in time for the new year. You can find show notes for this episode at emilylay.com slash podcast, where you can check out links and resources mentioned here. And you can shop the simplified brand of planners and products that'll help you simplify the year ahead. You can also find my brand new book, Sure as the Sunrise, 100 Morning Meditations on God's Mercy and Delight, right now, wherever you buy books. And hey, if you want these great kinds of conversations in your life every week, then you should go and subscribe to our show. It'll show up right in your phone. Talk about automated. Till next time, thanks so much for listening.